Hey everybody, this is Brad from Johnson Small Engines, better known as the One Hand Mechanic. If I can do it, you can too. Everybody's been asking about how do you put the carburetors back on? Well, this is a carburetor off of a 2410 snow thrower. This is the old style carburetor. This has just been freshly rebuilt and I'm going to show you how to put it on. I also am going to put a link in the description on how to remove the carburetors and how to rebuild the carburetor. Um, in my opinion how to do it. Uh, it also help you get through the carburetor issue. All right So I just want to show you I'm gonna put new gaskets on I'm gonna put new these two new gaskets I'm putting on this actually one gasket This is the new one. All right, you can't mess these up. You can't put them on backwards Okay, you can try and I guess that obviously right there is backwards. All right, it should only go on one way Exactly like that and just so you know, with the new gasket, sometimes you can't tell which way to go on because the old gasket has these little ridges on it. Just make sure that the new gasket goes on properly. This is the gasket that goes against the engine. This is the important gasket. The other two gaskets that go in the front here, there's two of them that go on this choke plate. And they're not as important because there's no air filter here. So it's not as important. But this one here, important. That's why we're replacing it. Let's go over to the engine, or let's go over to the engine now, the snowblower, and get this on. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is Get your gasket. I normally put the gasket on the carburetor and then I put the carburetor towards the engine and it just allows me to line it up a little bit easier just so I know, I just to make sure that you're putting on correctly. So make sure it's on correctly there and then just put it on there. All right. And as you can see, I already have a new one on here and we're gonna leave that one on. I was just showing you guys how to do it. All right, so we're gonna put the carburetor on. Now, you're not gonna put the carburetor in all the way all right i'm going to leave it out a little bit the reason being this rod this is your governor rod there's two rods or well one's a spring and one's a rod now on top of your carburetor on the governor rod itself like this is the governor bracket here it has a slot in the top okay and the slot in the top you have to get the rod from the governor arm in that slot and it only goes in one way okay so you have to have the carburetor out a little bit so this will actually go into the slot and then once it lines up it'll move right in and it'll be fine so remember that it, it only goes in one way and the carburetor has to be out a little bit for it to slide in the slot up top then the other little tricky one here is the spring the springs can be bent very easily there's a little teeny hole in the bracket right here and this is a, this is an anti-vibration spring it helps the governor not surge as much. But when your carburetor is properly rebuilt or you have a new carburetor, when this is warmed up, it should not surge at full speed after warm up. Remember that, okay? Now I'm gonna put the fuel line on. I have fuel line clamp here. I'm using rubber around, actually it's a uh, tape I have around these vice grips so it doesn't make a mess out of the fuel line. There is fuel line clamps, but this is how I do it and it works just fine. So you're gonna put your fuel line on. Make sure it goes on all the way. And then I'm gonna put the clamp on and disconnect the vice grips that I have on there. Okay. Just gonna press this in, make sure that this is actually round again. And it it's nice and round. If you have an old fuel line, you may wanna replace that just to make sure it's not deteriorated on the inside. Okay, so at this point, we can push this against the back side here. So that's how everything's going up. Make sure that you check to make sure that this actually moves properly. Okay, it should be nice and loose like that. Okay, so now we have to put on the other gasket here. There's two gaskets and they're not as important, but you do have to put them on. One gasket here. I'm gonna use the old gaskets because like I said, they're not as important. They're just, they just help stop a little bit of air that's gonna come through the elbow, but there is no air filter. It's gonna be snowing outside and you don't have to worry about an air filter. Now we have to get the choke plate. Okay, now here is the linkage and the choke plate. Okay, this is how, let's see if I can show it to you. Okay, this is how I, I try to take them off. When I take them off and I try to put them down on the table just like this, so you know how they go. So if you need, I'm gonna let you look at this for a couple seconds here. And then what you have to do is you have to put this 90 degree bend in the top of the choke right here, there's a hole. So you're gonna go straight down and then bend it 90 degrees and that should go in flush. And then you have to line up your bracket here with your studs right there, okay? So it should go on just like that. Now remember that, okay? Now that should go on like that. I'm gonna push it in. And then we have the other gasket, which is here. It goes here, okay? So put them on. And then we have this big piece here that's gonna go on next. This also has 
Like this is where that gasket goes. Okay, so we're gonna be putting it on the studs. This also has two little spacers right here. They can pop out and be careful that they don't pop out and you and you find up loot wind up losing them. But there's two spacers in there, you gotta make sure they're in there. And then when you put it down and around, just like this, you have this piece that comes across here that's gonna go here. And I also put the recoil rope out of the way so I can put this in here. Now the tricky part for me every single time I do this is you have to get these two studs lined up with these two um, holes here and then you have to get your choke your, your choke um, lever through this hole here and it can be challenging <laughs> all right some of them are easier this one has a stud that's this is the old style 2410 and this stud's coming out pretty far it's just the way they made this one but you have to kind of get these things all lined up correctly and then you have to get this bracket you got to get the choke lever through that hole, which I'm gonna use a pair of needle nose pliers and try to bend it towards that hole. I'm not trying to bend it, I'm trying to manipulate it because you don't wanna bend it. Um, but you have to manipulate it through the hole while you're keeping everything together. Now, that went fairly well, okay? So you just have to make sure your gaskets are still on, make sure everything's lined up, and then push this in. All right, so now I pushed it in. Now what you have to do is bring it back out a little bit. Now you have to come over to this side and you have a couple different things over here. You have your primer line which is here and the primer line has to go on where the primer is the primer stud right here that comes out of the carburetor a little bit hard to see um, but that has to go on there and then also this tube here that tube has to go on a it's a male piece of plastic that sits on this piece here it's inside so the tube's a little tricky to get in there but you have to it's a really hard to see this you really can't even videotape this you know when you take it apart that that tube comes off of a metal, or not a metal, it's a plastic a plastic piece that comes out from there. And this is the vent to your, to your um, valve cover, all right? So that has to get put on, and I'm trying to line it up as we speak and get that lined up, okay? You can tell it's on there once it's lined up. And then your, your primer line has to go on the back of your carburetor. And I'm gonna use a pair of a needle nose pliers again for that. And I do apologize if you can't see this because it's really tough to tell and I don't have light right there, but it just presses down over that. Once that's on there, just like that, it's on there, okay? And then I'm gonna go back to my tube because I know I put the tube out of whack again. Put the tube in and line that up with the other side and push it on. Now I'm also gonna, as I'm doing as I'm pushing this on, I'm pushing the primer line into its spot here all right now that clips up inside there and you got to be careful it doesn't come off the bottom when you're pushing this in here i'm going to give it a little bit of slack down here pull it down a little bit so it has a little bit of slack and i'm also going to make sure that my tube is on which it is okay now push it all the way in make sure your tube is on the correct spot it's a little tricky, but it can be done, and it has to be done. You can also sometimes take it off of this side and leave it on this side. It's a little, for me, it's a little bit easier just to the way I do it, just the way I just did it. Okay, now come down here, and you can see your threads coming out right here and here. Okay, that's good. So we have it together. Now on top of here, we also have this cover here, this cover. Now this is the old style. The new style has a different cover, I think because it has a, a choke that comes out the top. So it's going to be a little bit different. But this has to go back in. And it has to sit down inside there. And I'm gonna finagle these guys to make sure it lines up. And I'm gonna put the ignition wire underneath and I'm gonna put the primer wire on top. Now you have to use your right long studs. Make sure you get the right ones for, for where they came out of. So the other video should show, should, should, should show you that, but just remember when you take them off and make sure they're lined up and then gently, Put them down in there. I go very slow until I feel it bottom out. And if you have a ratchet, you can just feel. Okay, now you gotta make sure that that primer line is, is correct and it's gonna work. Make sure that everything's in there. And now you can come around to your two studs in the front and put your locking, they're not locking nuts, but they're actually capped nuts. And they go on pretty tight and snug them up. 
You don't want to go too tight, but you want them to be tight. Okay, at this point, we have the front cover on. We have everything connected here. Um, our throttle is right here. We're going to go around to this side where this is flapping around right here. And we take the starter button off to get this flap off. And I also put the recoil out of the way so I can get it back together again. And the hard part is lining up the bottom one. Once you get the bottom one lined up, the top one will line up pretty easily. And then just be careful, you do not over torque these. You can break the plastic. Get these on here. Just be gentle right there. You don't want to go too, if you just, it's probably better to use a manual driver than this. I've just done this enough that I don't break them, but I've seen people break them. I've broke one myself. Okay, so that's on. You can now take the recoil out and put it back around. I just put it out of the way so it doesn't mess me up when I put it back here again. Now we have knobs that we have to put on. And at this point, you can put your knobs on. Now, this knob has a little niche in it right here, a little notch. And it has to go inside here. So when you push this on, one, it can only go on really one way. That has to go over the lever right there, and then the notch goes inside there. So you get them lined up over there, and then push it on. Now at this point, I usually take a backside of a hammer and tap them in. Just make sure you're lined up correctly. And it has to go in pretty far. There you go. It, has to, it almost fits flush against this plastic. And then make sure it works. Everything's working as it is, as it should. Your throttle here has a little U-channel in it. Make sure that U-channel is down. And then right here, your throttle itself is actually shaped like a U facing down. Push that in. Again, backside of a hammer. Throttle works as it should. Okay, again, choke is working as it should. Now we have the top we have to put on. This is the heat shield. The heat shield actually has a little lip right here. And this is, like I said, this is the old style we're putting on. It goes underneath the gas tank. And then you have to put everything has to kind of, this, this right here, there's a little ledge right there. The muffler um, cover goes over this ledge. And also on this side, you have, you have holes to go into the cover that we took off. You gotta make sure that this is over that. Now, I guess you could start by putting one in here. And then what I like to do is I like to go over on the gas tank side and put this one in next because this one's a little tricky to get in and it's hard to line up sometimes. And you can only do it by hand. You can't you can't put this one in with a wrench or not with a wrench with a ratchet because it's just too tricky. All right, so this is not even lining up. So I'm going to come over to my other spots over here and make sure everything else is lining up. I'm going to try this again. Okay, so this one's not quite lining up, but I got the the bolt to go in. It's just a little bit off here, but it'll be okay. Just make sure you start them all before you tighten them up. Okay, then you come over to this side again, and we started with the one here, this one here, and we're gonna put the other one on here. Make sure you all start them by hand, and then go to your, over near your muffler area here, and there's two back here. Okay, so you, these are a little, these are straight on the mark. You have to have these, these two right. There's one right here, and there's one over here, and they got to be really on the mark, or they're a little tricky to get the bolts to start. So make sure you're lined up straight. Okay, that one in fairly easily. And I do the other ones before I get to these, just because these are really hard, and I like to have them as close as I can get them to get them lined up. This one's being a little tricky. Just have to have everything perfect. And I did take off the belt cover to get this one off. So you may have to take off your belt cover to help you out. And then once you get them all in, then you can start tightening them up. And then we have the one on the other side, which I have to use a wrench. Because you can't get, I mean, you can get a swivel in there, but... A wrench will work. It's not that hard. Okay, now as long as your fuel that was in this tank, make, make sure before you put this carburetor on, 
Make sure your tank, I should probably say that in the beginning, uh, make sure your tank is clean of gas. It's got fresh gas in there. Uh, I normally will pull out a little bit of fuel from the line before I put the carburetor on, and I've already done that before I even showed this video. So I'll try to put a little segment in the beginning of this video. I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to or not. I'm not the greatest editor. But anyway, let's see if this thing starts up. All right, so choke on. I'm gonna leave it about half. It's pretty warm out today, so I'm just gonna use the choke and we'll see if it fires up. pretty much it on how to install the carburetor back on a uh, snowblower it's a troy built 2410 snowblower thank you for watching please give it the thumbs up if you enjoyed this please subscribe and i'll catch you on the next one okay on a note on ordering parts i like to always put this in this model number here this is a troy built so the model number is the 31a that long number right there is what you want to use when you go onto a Troy Built website to get the parts for this. And always remember, Troy Built is just the name on the machine, but MTD is the manufacturer, okay? MTD has made a lot. MTD has made Cub Cadets. They make Bolins. Um, they put their name, you know, Troy Built put their name on this, but it's an MTD product. When you go to look for parts, that's the number you need.